Hello everyone, this is Coach Oliver and today we'll be discussing simplification, okay. one of uh, the strategies to win a chess game is the process of elimination or shall we say simplification. All right, put your eyes on the screen. We got the first position here, a game by Bogolibov and Alexander Alikhain, a former world champion. Alikhain here is playing black. And Bogolibov white, and Bogolibov won against Alikhain. Okay, if you look at the position carefully, we have an equal amount of material where white has four pawns, same as black, with four, a minor piece for white, just a knight, for black, bishop, the same value, white has one rook, same as black with one rook, and one queen each. Okay, so materially it's equal. But how does white win here? And now again, we start the process of elimination. Okay, white here played a very nice move. Rook takes c7, forcing queen takes c7, of course. After queen takes e7, the queen is, of course, threatened to be captured by the rook on d8, with rook c7, plus the queen on c7 is also attacking it. But white has this Zhuzhen Zook, an intermediate check, an in between move with knight c5. It's a check, and it forces, a check forces the king to move away, or forces the opponent. To make a move. It could be that the opponent captures the attacking piece, but in this case, the king the queen cannot take the knight because it's being pinned by the queen on b7. There's no other piece that can capture the knight. Right? And a knight check cannot be blocked. A knight check can only be one is to capture that knight. Or second one is to move away the king. All right. So in this case, we have to move away the king, and it's forced. King goes to b6. Only then we capture the queen with a check. King captures with the knight on c5 now, and the king on c7. We have a simple fork. Okay, a very basic tactic: fork. A fork is when you attack two pieces at the same time. So this, in this case, the knight is attacking the king and the rook at the same time. And in this case, again, there is no way that a piece can capture the knight. And when a knight check, you cannot block it. You are forced to move the king away. And you cannot capture the knight, so just move the king away. Then you take the rook. King takes the knight. Now we are left with a very simple position. White has an extra pawn after the process of elimination. He gets four pawns compared to black's three. So simple mathematics, four minus three is one. So white is ahead by a single point. But a pawn may be small, right? It's a foot soldier, okay? Maybe small, but once the pawn again, when it reaches the end of the board from the opponent's side, it can promote to any piece you want, except of course the king. You can promote to a queen, a rook, a bishop, or a knight. But most importantly, you of course you promote to the queen as the most powerful piece. Okay. So after king takes knight, you have b4, so another pawn is hanging on a3, so you have a target on a3, by the way. King goes to c7, king now goes to c2, king to b6, now you have king to b3. 
into behind. The second one, pause. All right, your opponent will not give you the point straight away. So he plays king c4. That's his last chance. And in chess, okay, uh, our lesson is simplification. One way of dealing with the process of elimination is this. We, we also develop the character of not being greedy, right? Being selfless. We can give it back. We are two points up. So why not give up the pawn? And we still have one left. In life, all right? We can't have all the good things. Okay? We can give up one for a better one. Okay, after king takes b5, we have king b3. Anyway, we have an extra one. We don't need more. We only need one, right? King a5, a4. One is enough. King b6, we have king b4. King a6, we have a5. King b7, and now king c5. And now we get into this principle of two weaknesses where black cannot prevent any of the two pawns to promote. For example, he moves the king to a6. You just take the pawn on d5. He takes the pawn on a5. You go to king e6. He tries to reach the pawn, king b6, d5. He tries to reach it, but now you have king e7. And if you look at the king, if you look at the king, the control of these three important squares, and black cannot stop the pawn from promoting. If it's a king to c8, you just keep on pushing. Push. Let's say you get a check. Here. You cut off the king. Push the king to one side. Okay, here. Queen, for example. King here. You move the king back. King one more. And now it's a checkmate. All right. So in chess, coming this is coming from an equal material, right? By using the process of elimination, visualizing that you get an extra pawn in the end. You see that winning a single pawn now two, give back one, still have an extra one. And then you go into a simple king and pawn ending. Takes king, push, and then you promote the pawn, right? After gaining that pawn, right? That pawn, that one pawn, it promotes to the queen. The pawn became a big one. Goes to d6 to cut off the king. He goes to one side. You just have to be careful by going to queen c7. This square here because it's going to be a stalemate so you gotta be careful so you allow the opponent to have some breathing room queen d7 so he has a square on b8 to go to then after king b8 okay move it back and now put all right so this is a fine example of simplification right Okay, we go on to the next sample. Okay, we have here a game by Gary Kasparov against Milan Vucic. Gary Kasparov was white. Okay, let's go through the game. Okay, it starts at e4, c6, e4, d5. So this is a Karo Khan. Okay, this is one of uh, a solid defense used by black against the king's pawn or against e4. It's also close to the slab structure where you play d4, there's d5, c4, and then c6. Okay, so knight bd2 takes Knight takes on e4, bishop f5, developing the bishop. The knight attacks the bishop back. Bishop moves back to g6. h4, 
trying to trap the bishop on h5. So black has to create a square for his bishop to move back. Knight f3, threatening knight e5. So knight to, this knight goes to e5, attacking the bishop. So he goes knight d7, protecting that square. h5, bishop to h7, developing the bishop with a threat. H takes, e6, bishop d2. Okay. Showing his intention to castle on the queen side. Okay, another way is, of course, castle short to it. Here, o, o dash o, the other one is o dash o dash o. So queen c7, castles to queen side, knight g and 6. Knight e4, the knight of g3 wasn't doing anything, so better exchange castles. g3, takes and takes. All right. Bishop goes to e7. King to b1. Moving out of danger. Well, if you look at uh, the king on e1, and if you look at, keep an eye on the bishop on e7. So opposite color of the bishop, so you could stay away from chance. At the same time, you're also protecting that pawn on e2, because from C1, it's not protecting. B1, it protects. All right, so rook hg8. We need to back bishop to d6, centralizing the rooks. Look at the two rooks. They are, cent they are centralized. Okay. Rook to e7, c4, c5. We have bishop to c3, knight f6. Knight goes to e5, takes on d4. Takes on d4, takes on e5, takes, takes, takes. Oh, black should be happy after exchanging. So it's question now is he close to a draw? Maybe, maybe not. Rook to d7, bishop c3, protecting the important invasion on d2. So that the opponent cannot invade on the second rank. So after queen b6, g4, protecting the h5 pawn to give freedom to your queen. Queen d6, we have f3. Okay, we call this one a pawn chain. That's a nice pawn chain. Pawns are protecting each other. a6, okay, the, in this pawn chain, we have a base on f3. Okay, f3 is a base. Okay, so a4, queen d3, king to c1. King to c7, takes, takes, rook f1, protecting the base, f3. King to c2, attacking the rook. And now a5, we have a pawn nail. The pawn nail, it nails the b pawn. Okay, nailing the b pawn. It's just like 1 versus 2. Because the pawn cannot go b5, then you have n passant. Okay, so how to. A5, there's 98, rook e1, rook to d6, and now f4. And here, black blunders with the knight f6. So, this is the most critical part of the game. Again, in chess, the person who makes the last mistake loses the game. And unfortunately, for black, this is. His big blunder, and this is his final mistake. And how does Gary Kasparov take advantage of that mistake? It starts with Bishop takes f6, G takes f6, and now Rook d1. A pretty good move, Rook d1. You have to exchange the Rook because, as they say, 75% of rook endings are drawn. Okay, most of the time, it could be 90% of rook endings drawn, even if you're one pawn up. So with the exchange of the rook here, black actually resigned. But what if he continues with rook takes d1? Let's say he captures the rook on d1. 
this king takes d1. If let's say the king goes c5, trying to attack the pawn, now white has g5. Okay, we have what we call the pawn breakthrough. Let's say after g5 takes, oh no, sorry, after g5, opponent takes, pawn takes, you take. And the king is outside the rule of the square. And the king cannot get to the pawn. Okay, let's move back again after rook d1. So opponent takes, king takes d1. Now let's say the king moves closer to the pawn. You still have to play g5, takes, takes. The king moves closer, king e5. You take the pawn. All right, the king now is inside the rule of the square. But the problem is, the king is in a zugzwang position. Because once the king moves, the pawn will just simply push. Because this nice pawn here is protecting the g6 square. All right, and now right after king f6. Okay, here white can play b4, and black has no other move. E5, we have B5. If let's say E4, we can have C5. If let's say take, we have a second breakthrough on the other side of the board. C6 takes, and we have A6. Let's say E3, we have A7. And let's say B4, it's too late. Now we promote to. And that's an easy win for white. But it started with a very bad mistake, a very bad blunder by Black Knight F6. In chess, even if let's say for the first 40 years, here probably 35 moves, Black was actually doing okay. But unfortunately on the 35th move, he made a big blunder. So in chess, you got to be careful, you got to keep your concentration until the end of the game because one mistake and if your opponent is good, you will actually lose the game. Okay, so chess is a game of concentration. Concentration. Okay. Keep it focused until the game ends. So black was a bit lax with Knight as he thought, oh, okay, the draw is enough here, probably. He missed this important rook d1, the process of elimination. Once the rook is gone, game is over. Alright? So those are two fine examples of simplification. Okay, let's move on to other examples. We'll go to the next one. All right, this is black to play. Okay, black is up an exchange. But the knight on g2 is threatening f4, so you cannot move away your king. So again, we do the process of elimination, but it's also important that we know the basic ending. And in this case, the correct move here is rook takes g2. King takes g2, and we should know this basic endgame of outflanking. A case where the other player has the active king, and here against the passive king, it's active against the passive king. So here, black outflanks white and gets the f3 pawn. Okay, for example, king f2, king goes to d3, king g2. King goes to e2, king g1, he takes the pawn on f3, king goes to f1, king goes to g3, and after that takes the pawn on h4. Is This is a classic case of the principle of two weaknesses. We have two points, we have two points here, and it's not easy for white to stop any of those points. For example, let's say, let's continue. King here, king up, we push the other one, we push this one, 
and then we push this. Okay. If here we push the other point, here we push this C7 point. If it stops it, we have another one, and it promotes to to, to H1. Finishes the game. Black wins. Anyhow. So again, basic hand game outflanking. So you have to know the very basic. The, the most basic hand game is king versus pawn. King and pawn versus king. Yes. And this one outflanking. Okay. An active king against a passive king. All right. We go to the next one. Another example. Okay. Same case as the, the, the previous one. We sacrifice a rook. Okay, if let's say king f3, we get the pawn. So now, if the bishop takes the rook, we have take. Okay, now let's say the king wants to stop. King is much active here and it's much closer to the opponent's pawn. And king takes, and you cannot stop the pawn from promoting one here. Let's say I get to show you an illustration in here, in here, and now you have king h2 taking away these three key squares. We call it key squares or important squares. Those squares are the squares where the pawn can go being protected by the king, and it promotes on g1. And wins the game. Again, it starts with rook g4, exchange sacrifice, attacking the pawn on h4, forcing white to take the rook, and the king is much closer to that pawn and wins the game. Alright? So I think you get an idea now on how to win the game in the simple way. Okay, the process of elimination. Okay, let me have the next one. Okay, probably the last one. This is a game by Fisher against Lombardi. Fisher was black here. Uh, all right. Fisher has five pawns, while white has an extra pawn. And uh, white has this central pass pawn on e5. But Fisher has other plans. Okay, he's exchange up. But he has other plans. Takes the bishop. Simplify, right? Takes. Takes the pawn on e5. Same number of pawns now. Take the rook. Goes to d5. King d2. Goes to c4. And I have an active king, by the way. Alright, the pawn pushes h5. And now, very good move b6. Threatening a5, preparing the outside pass pawn. Okay, it's good to have an outside pass pawn because we use that outside pass pawn to distract the opponent's king. Okay, it's a far pass pawn. If the king goes into that pawn, you can use it as a distraction, and your king goes to the other side of the board. Okay, so after b6, opponent by king c2. G5, okay, it's just fixing. C4, G4, and now the outside pass pawn. Takes, takes. King goes to B2, A4. King to A3. King takes on C3. The moment the opponent takes your A4 pawn, your king goes closer to the other side where you pick up the pawns, pick up the apples on the other side. It will be too late for the opponent to go to your pawn, let's say on A7. Say he wants to go to your a7, a7 pawn. It's too late. You just take it. Yes. And this pawn will just promote to the queen. And you win the game. Alright. So again, this is one of the best ways to win a chess game. The process of elimination or simplification. And also, we are developing our character of not being greedy. Right? We learn to be, you know, we cannot say, I need one more. I need two more. I need three more. Okay? 
we cannot do that life can be simple and simple life is a good life in chess simple chess wins not to be fancy okay so this is a good lesson also i hope you enjoy the lesson all right in life if you're simple you're good and it's better that way okay live simply and you can win in life have a good day everyone and see you next time